Automata theory has a long history in science. Its beginnings can be traced back to the 1840s, with the field being actively developed from the 1930s on. The topic is a central part of most study programs in computer science in the world and in many discrete mathematics programs for several reasons. It's a very simple model of computation. It's a good model for interactive computations, meaning a machine that reacts to its environment and leads its computation in response to the environment. And also, it captures the inter interactive aspects of many different real-life processes. Identify patterns in text or images, the steps taken in a medical diagnostic process, investment decisions, artificial intelligence, for example, as you see it in gameplays. It's an important foundation of computer science study programs because it introduces the concept of computing in a simple framework, yet capturing the essential features of step-by-step -step processes and that of the interaction with the environment. It's perhaps the most fundamental presentation of the concept of computational thinking. It's an important part of mathematics study programs because it shows a part of math that is very different than the traditional parts – calculus, algebra, geometry, topology, number theory, and so on. Even in the context of discrete math, it shows unique concepts such as dynamical processes and infinity. This course is a basic introduction to automata theory. It consists of two parts. In the first part of the course, we introduce two simple mathematical instruments to allow reasoning about iterative computational processes. And on one hand, we will discuss about structural inductions, for example, to enable reasoning about successful computations of an automaton. And on the other hand, we are going to discuss about um, uh, Boolean algebras, for example, enabling reasoning about building complex computations by combining several simpler automata. In the second part of the course, we are going to introduce the key element of automata theory. We will discuss about regular expressions, which are uh, central, for example, in pattern matching. We will discuss finite automata, for example, central in uh, uh, algorithmics, and regular grammars, uh, for example, very important in um, compilers for programming languages. And I want to start with a very brief history of concepts and, and people important in automata theory. And the point I want to make is that automata theory as we know it um, came as a result of several different streams of motivations and concepts converging almost simultaneously to give what we currently call automata theory and um, uh, formal languages. The roots of automata theory are traced back to the 1930s and 1940s when there was a strong need to understand the concept of computation to be able to develop computing machines. But in fact, the foundations were already laid in the 19th century with contributions from Boole and De Morgan. And what they essentially did was a sort of algebraization of logic, allowing to operate with logical statements. And this was crucial, for example, for the work done by Claude Shannon on switching circuits, where the objective was to develop a computing machine that would calculate on binary inputs. And this was done around 1938. And about the same time as Shannon, we had also Alonso George, uh, Emil Post and Alan Turing working on different abstract concepts of a computing machine. And their objective was to try to clarify whether mathematics is decidable. Meaning that uh, if you are given a mathematical statement, you would like to know whether you can decide whether that statement is true or false through some sort of a generally applicable prescription, what we call today an algorithm. And working on this, uh, Post and Turing came up with the so-called um, factory worker model where the idea is that you would have a uh, input tape uh, feeding input to some sort of an elementary operational unit that only has a finite memory and can only read and change the current input cell. And this was uh, supposed to resemble the idea of a, um, a factory worker uh, that, that's working on an um, uh, input belt and can only see the particular object in front of uh, him or her and 
do something to that object and then the the, the belt moves with one position one position to to the right and the worker works on the uh, next object and in case of errors uh, the worker also has the ability to uh, move the input belt one position to the left there was also about the same time a different type of motivation and that was the um, uh, quest to understand the connectivity and the functioning of the brain seen as a network of neurons and these neurons would be firing and they would promote the activation of their neighbors and all of these were formalized through propositional logic and the main proponents of this line of work were McCulloch and Peetz um, and um, this was work done in 1943. A little bit later after the Second World War uh, we have um, in the 1950s uh, we have uh, Kliny um, uh, working on representations of events in such neural networks and um, later one that, that was uh, to become what we nowadays call uh, regular expressions and uh, uh, use in um, a lot of work related to pattern matching. Um, in 1956, again a different line of thought and a different motivation coming from um, Noah Chomsky, he was um, uh, he, he is a linguist and uh, he proposed some mathematical structures to generate all sentences of a, um, a human language and uh, his idea was that he would like to understand the formal rules uh, of what make uh, you know correct sentences in a, in a natural language for example in uh, in english um, and it didn't quite work out it didn't it, it wasn't quite successful with, with human languages but it turned out to be uh, later on hugely successful with machine languages opening the way to compilers and in general, later on, lay, laying the foundations to what was to become software engineering. And uh, 1959, we have this work done by um, uh, Rabin and Scott uh, on uh, finite automata and their decision problems. And this, in fact, is the modern version of automata. And um, in fact, uh, the terminology that they proposed in, in this seminal paper is pretty much what we are also going to follow uh, in, in this course. From the local perspective, um, Turku was one of the early world capitals of research in automata theory and, and formal languages. And this was uh, due to uh, Arto Saloma, uh, an academician, one of only 12 at that time, and professor at University of Turku, who was an early pioneer of research in um, automata theory. He, he was responsible for introducing this um, topic in Finland and uh, worldwide he was um, very well known for example as being the author of the first good monographs in um, automata theory uh, there is this book that uh, really helped uh, spreading uh, this uh, topic uh, quite a lot theory of automata published in 1969 followed um, uh, a few years later by uh, this book on formal languages 1973 and even later on uh, by another one, Jewels of Formal Language Theory in 1981. As a curiosity, he also published later on uh, some things about uh, what computer scientists should know about sauna. Uh, this was in uh, 1981 in the Bulletin of the European Association of Theoretical Computer Science. Um, in this uh, course, there are a few key concepts that we are going to, to cover. And on one hand, we are going to discuss about computations. And in this course, computations are going to be step-by-step, -step, arbitrarily long processes in which we will see how the input is being processed step-by-step. -step. And typically, that's going to be in the form of uh, some automata that we will define later in the course, processing their input. But we will also see computations um, in a different way as a sort of a generative process. Uh, the idea being that you are generating an output step by step. And, and we are going to see that in the form of um, regular grammars generating an output. And finally, we will also see a different concept of, uh, of computation in the way that we analyze a structure describing a pattern and, and that's going to be in the form of um, uh, regular expressions and to do all of these things we will first introduce a number of skills that we need to reason about such computations um, we are going to need to uh, discuss how to prove uh, properties of 
all elements of a discrete infinite set. Um, and, and the reason is, is this that uh, our computations can be arbitrarily long and we will need to think about all these intermediate steps that our uh, computations are going to go through. So proving properties of um, uh, all elements of discrete infinite sets is going to be one skill that we need to build uh, very early on in the course. And that's going to be done um, through uh, induction and especially uh, structural induction. And one comment I have is that um, some of you may have seen induction in some other courses, maybe in high school math or in some basic courses of, of math. Um, but in this course, we are going to build on that basic notion of uh, induction and we are going to, in fact, go to structural induction. And, and the difference is that we are going to discuss about how to uh, build, uh, how to define structures inductively or if you want, recursively, this is an, another word, word used uh, in computer science, um, how to prove properties about such uh, infinite recursive structures and also how to define functions uh, on such uh, recursive structures. And again, the motivation is we need to reason about computations and, and computations are going to be in some sense um, such, uh, you know, recursive um, uh, structures um, uh, constructed step by step from some basic elements. So we will discuss about this uh, structural induction um, in a somewhat more sophisticated way than the, um, you know, basic notion of induction that you may have seen in some um, uh, other courses uh, in, in basic mathematics. And then another skill that we are going to need to be able to reason about computations is going to be in the form of uh, Boolean algebras and uh, matrices. Um, and uh, again, a comment here is that uh, you may have seen uh, Boolean algebras um, in some other courses in the form of just operating with zero and one. Again, we are going to, to take um, a more sophisticated approach uh, here because uh, for discussing about computations, we will need um, also other structures than just the uh, binary uh, Boolean algebra. But the basic uh, style is going to be somewhat similar as the, in the uh, binary Boolean algebra that you may have seen in some other courses. One other comment I, I want to make is that we are going to teach this course with an emphasis on proving the correctness of our constructions and the correctness of the properties of our machines, of our automata. And this is, I think, important for computer scientists going towards computational complexity of their algorithms, discovering the limits of what can be computed efficiently. And we are going to see in this course, uh, for example, deductive proofs of the type that you are used to. Um, and the style is going to be, if something is known, then we prove something new using that knowledge. But we will also have inductive proofs um, that are particularly useful in computer science. And, and the basic idea there will be, if some basic elements are known, what can we say about all the structures that are obtained by combining those elements? Just to give you a quick example, if we know how an automaton processes single letters of the input, what can we say about all the strings it's going to accept no matter how long they are? There will also be some other proof techniques in this course, such as uh, proofs by contradiction or by counterexample and uh, equivalence proofs. And the point with formal proofs is, of course, to convince the reader about the validity of the uh, argument. And the style and the level of detail can be quite different from uh, case to case. But we will see many such examples in this course.